All right, let's see. Uh, other than that, we got character generation. Um, I went over some of the stuff that you guys have sent me so far, and I don't see any problems with any of it. Um, did anybody have any questions? I, I noticed that, Dan, you made some notes on your character, that you had some questions on your character generation. Can you hear us, Dan? I can see his icon, but I can't hear him. Yeah, I can't hear him either. Anybody else? Can y'all hear him? Or? No. No. Like, it sounded like you made some noise there, but I can't hear any talking. Okay. All right, well, uh, until he can figure out whatever wrong. Um, character generation, Deb, you guys, I, I know Justin's already generated the character. Oh, I'm not sure what's going on there. I see two Dan's now. <laughs> what happened? He dropped and the first one didn't time out yet. Yeah, we thought I would just drop um, Does anybody have any, any questions on their character generation? Um, go, go ahead. Um, not not really because I haven't done mine quite yet. <laughs> right. So, yeah, me um, too, basically. I, I was out of town and kind of got behind, and no. I wanted to work with Sean a little bit on probably locked anything down. But I have a concept, but I haven't done it mechanically, you know, yet. Yeah, me too, right. pretty much. I don't think it'll take too long to put together. Um, I'm looking at uh, Goblin, Spellcaster, um, probably. Basically, a sneaky little guy. Um, that's pretty much it so far. And of course, okay. Jeff and I are working together. He's got his uh, his big ugly ogre. We're yeah. Going to be uh, possibly um, comrades from the war. Mm -hmm. uh, from the losing side. Yep, I'm in between a uh, ogre uh, kind of brute and an ogre kind of shaman. Mystic, um, I mean, a caster, more of a physical caster, kind of like when I think shaman, I think wow, shaman. You know, okay. had big totems and actually punch shit in the face, but have some sort of spiritual magic around them. Um, but I don't know how to do that in GURPS at all, so I'm going to need to take it offline and work with you, Alex, on that. Yeah, that's no problem. Um, we can we can do it through either spell casting. Uh, if you're looking for like more like wow type powers, we can just do uh, advantages and then throw on limitations on it, like. Uh, Magical requires mana, all that good stuff, and to make it like more of a, a power invoke type thing with okay. big cost and stuff like that. Yeah, I was thinking, and, and, and I wanted to have some physical because he's a big guy, um, and maybe have some sort of spiritual essence, but that not be his whole thing. Like a mage is just pure spell casting, right? Right. Um, maybe somewhat of a hybrid, which is my my version of a mind of what a shaman I'm looking for. But I mean, I'm I'm up for flexibility. I'm a, you know, really the, the concept is what's most important. We'll figure out how it works. Basically. Okay. Oh, that was the other thing I was going to ask you guys. Uh, player okay. secrecy. I know some people are really big on it and other people don't really care. Um, does anyone does, does anyone prefer character secrecy? As in what? Uh, uh, no. Passing notes to the game master kind no, no, of thing? No, no. What I mean by it is like posting characters. Uh, I know some people can be particular about knowing but other players knowing oh. their secrets or disadvantages and stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, I, I don't want to know their secrets. <laughs> What's that? Okay. I don't want to know their secrets. If okay. they have any secrets, I don't. I want to maintain no meta game knowledge, ideally. Okay, that so, you, way, okay, so you want to keep everybody's uh, stuff secret? Yeah. But, okay. but my character has no secret, so you can look at this character's feet. I designed it a bit simple. <laughs> well, here's the deal. Here's what I was going to suggest. Um, everyone just simply post whatever you are willing to share. Whatever. Okay. okay. Personally, it just is me, but personally, I, I, I want to trust the players I, I play with enough not to metagame with that. So it's it's kind of hard to maintain what I told the group, what I didn't help do, that kind of BS, personally. So I'm fine with it. Um, but I would trust my fellow gamers to kind of just say, hey, you know, my character doesn't know this. I'm not going to act or, you know, stab someone in the back because I knew his secret or something like that. But um, right. I just find it's a whole level of management I don't really want to have to deal with. No, I feel it, yeah. it makes it a little difficult. But, but like, like I said, 
I think how we can handle is we just send, uh, if if you as characters just simply don't post whatever you don't you're unwilling to share. Okay. Yeah. Um. Uh, I if if everyone's okay with it, I'd rather start with everybody being close friends. Um. That oh, way yeah. we have no trust issues. Uh, if you have a secret, my like it would be something like we wouldn't bother to ask since we're good friends. Kind of thing. <laughs> okay. Yeah, it certainly does save time if we assume we all know each other fairly well. Yeah, I think Sean and Jeff were already going to tie their characters in together. Yeah. Mm. I'll, I'm going to be their human. Because I'm a scout, I, I could have easily tied up with them too. Uh, yeah. I, I figure uh, a working relationship is, is, is adequate. Mm. You know, that way you trust each other to some degree and you're not, you know, out. The whole hostile first session is always fun. So if we can just get <laughs> past that. Um, that there's a layer level of trust, and yeah, I agree. Okay. Yeah. Are you with us there, Dan? There's two yeah, I, I seem to be having a little bit of uh, internet problems at the moment. Right. Oh, there. Okay. Okay. Well, at least we can hear you now. Were you able to hear the conversation prior? I, I think we him? lost the Dan that could hear us. <laughs> <laughs> Let me try inviting you. Okay, that's really loud, whatever you're doing. <laughs> hey, Justin, can you hear us? Yeah, I can hear you guys. <laughs> yeah, that... Whatever you're doing, the <laughs> mic is picking it up really well. Yeah, like... <laughs> oh, I'm pressing... I'm flipping through a notebook for a scratch. <laughs> oh, okay. Your, your mic must be down there. I thought you had a typewriter. Uh, no, it, it's, uh, it's supposed to be this, dude. It might not be working properly. Oh, there. It should be good. <laughs> All right, I have re-invited Dan again. Thank you, no. Okay, has everybody used Roll20 before? Is anyone unfamiliar with it? I am. I've, I've been used in it. I've, I've never successfully used it. <laughs> right, yeah. The, the few times we used it for, for mapping, it didn't really work out too well, um, other than that very last game session we played. <laughs> um, I, would, I would like to try using it. Hopefully, it has gotten better. Um, <laughs> But I've been we, using it um, pretty regularly. I've done about 13, 14 games on it with no, no major problems. Okay, cool. Um, I, I think it's important for everybody to use Chrome. Uh, if you try huh. to use IE, it doesn't work very well. I've noticed that. Um, so believe it or not, yeah, uh, Chrome stuff works better with – Google stuff works better with Chrome. But uh, um, <laughs> Makes sense. There are some tweaks, though, you can do um, with it to try to get it to work a little better. So I'll be happy to help. Um, now, as far as as far as the mapping and stuff is concerned, GURPS can get really, really crunchy, and I don't want to use too much of the crunch. I want to keep it as um, easy flowing as possible. Um, this game, I really wanted to focus more on story than anything else. I mean, yeah, there there there's potential for combat and stuff like that, but I don't want to get bogged down with counting hexes, determining facing, adding up negative modifiers and everything. Because um, like I said, as, as, as even with a tabletop game, it can slow the game down pretty substantially. Uh, I think that with an online game, it might become a bit too much. So, let's see. I agree. Uh, I run a Savage Worlds regular campaign and uh, even Savage Worlds being it, it, how light it is, it can get a little much on our virtual tabletop. So. Oh, there he goes again. Poor yeah. man. I keep inviting him, and he keeps dropping. Um, Dan, if you can hear us, use Chrome. <laughs> Maybe he's mm. muted. Because don't you come in default muted? I did, yeah. Same here. I don't know if you can hear us, Dan. 
All right, I'm actually looking through the portal. We have 150 character and 25 disad, or 50 disad. Uh, 50 points is the maximum for disadvantages, and you do get five points of quirks. Now, as far as quirks go, I, how I how I usually do quirks is I allow you to go ahead and get the five points without actually. <laughs> we heard something there, Dan. I don't know what that was. <laughs> it's just a dying like... computer. Yeah. Um, a question about the rules. Yeah. Uh, are is there gonna be um that rule which allows us to burn points? For critical misses, good question. So that we don't get killed. Yes, I will allow it. Okay. Um, and I don't know if everyone else is familiar with the rule, but what it, basically what it amounts to is, if you have any unspent character points, you can spend one unspent character point to turn a failure or a critical failure into a normal failure. Um, you can spend two unspent character points to turn a critical failure into a success. Or you can spend three unspent character points to turn a critical failure into a critical success. Okay. Uh, since we're going for a little more cinematic uh, game, uh, I am going to allow that. But you have to have the points. Um, there's no GM. There's no GM loaning. <laughs> if you don't have the points, you can't do it. Um, and the same goes for. Uh, Loaning po character points. There, there won't be any character loaning points either, um, because it is GURPS. I would like to use, I, I would like to utilize the system for its, for a little bit of more gritty game, or a darker, a darker story. And that's the other thing that's a good, that I wanted to discuss. Does anyone object to character death? No. no. Nope. I prefer it to be in a fashion which. Uh is a little more heroic, but definitely I won't. I won't. I won't. But if it happens, it happens. I won't do a GM douchebag thing and just, just kill you randomly. Um, but if this, but if the situation necessitates it and if it, it adds to the story, I just want to make sure that no one's going to object to it. That it does happen. If it does nope. happen, no problem. Cool. Cool. Um, let's see. So we know Jeff. And Sean, Justin, uh, is Justin, was that your complete character that you sent me? Uh, Amaranth Green, yes. That's, uh, um, I didn't have, I didn't have time to write up his story, but, um, I'll have one. It's very simple, just so that it fits everybody's, uh, Okay, cool. I was going to say, how did you want to tie your character into these two guys, or, and, and to Dan as well? Dan sent me his character background, which is really cool. Um, mm -hmm. Uh, I my character is very broad-minded, so as long as the characters are not sociopaths, I guess yeah, has no problem. <laughs> uh, well, we're gonna have some problems in Justin, so. <laughs> well, okay. What I mean, extent of sociopathy? Uh, <laughs> just, I'm just messing with you, dude. Okay. Because <laughs> I, I play a sociopath in another game, so it's like uh, I'd like to take it easy for a while. <laughs> we can hear you, buddy. Yes. Can you hear me yeah, now? We can hear you. Yep, ah. we can hear you. Oh, good. Uh, good. Um, um, you said you're going to use Roll20. Are you going to use Roll20 uh, with the Google Adding app or actually use the uh, tab browser? You're breaking up really bad there. I, I don't know if anyone else caught that. I caught for me. He was I asking. Couldn't. He was asking if we're going to use Roll Twenty uh, native or use it inside of Google Hangouts. Oh, gotcha. Um, I don't. I don't. Mm, how I how I did it. I don't know if it makes a difference to you guys. I logged into Roll Twenty, and then just hit the Google Hangout button. That that's how I've been using it for my games, and it works pretty well because I think what happens is you're not using all of the Roll Twenty bandwidth for the voice and the um, chat. Mm -hmm. Um, and so that's from a little smoother. I've tested Roll20 just natively, uh -huh. and you're using all the everything going through Roll20 servers, which is probably not as robust as Google's. Okay, cool. Um, I'll keep that in mind. So that's I'm, I'm indifferent. I'm just, yeah, I'm just, I'm indifferent, but um, just letting you know my experience. With no, 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 cool, cool. Yeah, definitely. Like I said, I've only, the only time I've really used Roll20 was when uh, we, I played in Stu's game, and um, I've messed around it on with by myself a little bit just to test it out and stuff like that. So I don't, I'm not really very, very familiar with 
how robust it is as far as streaming and stuff like that goes. So next time we get together, I'll just go through Google+. Plus. Yeah, but the way you did it is the right way. You go to Roll20 and you launch it from Roll20. Oh, launch it from Roll20. Okay. okay. But there's a way to run it just within Roll20 without using Google Hangouts. And I've noticed the audio video is a little bit more laggy than if you use it through Google, Google Hangouts as well. Okay, cool. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. So you did it the right way. I mean, not the right way, but you did it the way I've been doing it, I guess. Okay, cool, cool. <laughs> It's um, the right way. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't trying to say that. <laughs> Just kidding. Um, okay, let's see. What else have we got? Uh, does, does anybody have any? Does anybody have any questions as far as the setting goes? Uh, yeah, kind of. Um, we're not using Bane. We kind of talked about this. We're not using Bainstorm as a setting, more of a mechanical template right. version. Okay. So is it up to us to decide, like, I'm an ogre, right? Do you have pre-established rules on ogres, or can I kind of make that I up? I do not. You, can, you are free to embellish and to add to as much as you want. Okay. Um, just whatever you, whenever you do, just be sure to let me know. That way I can add that into the story. And that's what I was going to lead into as well. As far as backgrounds are concerned, the more background material you give me, the better, because I, how I like to do it is I, I like to take character backgrounds and kind of weave that into the story. That way everyone has an opportunity to really get enmeshed and, and immersed better. Uh, I think it works out better. Um, so, again, more background material, the better. So, and, and everyone's really, been really good about that so far. So far, the backgrounds that I've got have been really awesome. And in fact, I'm already working on stuff for whenever we do play. Okay. Well, I'll make sure ogres have flying magical ponies and we're all good. <laughs> um, let's see, let's see. Uh, this kind of looks like, uh, to my mind, the uh, initial colonization of North America, basically. This is roughly, you know, the kind of setting that we're dealing with. Yes, but imagine okay. you show up on the shores... And it, you know you've got magic. It, right. This is much more of a um, imagine kind of like, like like a northern colony type setting, but with a lot a lot of deadwood ele uh, deadwood elements to it. Uh, okay. There, there there is law, but there's no real power backing it up right now because they're way over there. <laughs> <laughs> you know, right. and you guys are all by yourselves in a small colony. In a very unknown world, so it sounds like a lot of opportunity for you know, expansion, hijinks, and various things. Like Definitely, that. that's why I was saying uh, before earlier in the thread that we started. Uh, this game can really go in any direction you want. We can do a mystery type investigation game. You could do a swashbuckling type of game if you guys wanted to go that direction. We could do an exploration game. You could just start marching off into the woods if you wanted to. Um, so it really just depends. Or you, you could settle down and really bunker down in, in, in the town and establish yourself. So um, well, from the looks of it, characters might be leading more towards that direction. Yeah, honestly, guys, well, one thing I've always been interested in doing, and I, I'm open for anything. I mean, I'm really, whatever, I'm, I'm, you know, everything's fun for me when it comes to role playing. But I've, all, I've always been interested in kind of the world building aspects. I've never got a chance to do that. I've always been kind of adventuring, and, and that's cool, and that's part of it. But it would be kind of fun to have like a side where we go off adventuring, but maybe we either build a presence in town or establish something and you get to see it grow kind of mechanically and organically through, you know, as we adventure, uh, you know, maybe a year from now, the, the town's different and we've had an impact on that. Oh, definitely. Uh, that was the other thing I was going to ask you guys, uh, as far as your characters are concerned, did you guys want to start off in the colony, as in you've already been pre-established, like maybe one of the first ships over, maybe somewhere in mid, mid year or whatever, or did you want to start the game coming over to the new colony? Uh, or how will my character be a part of the colony? Okay. Okay. I, I was thinking for mine, my character would be um, at least from part of the uh, tribe of, or at least the cousin of the tribe that actually was harassing the colony at one point um, to add a little bit of tension to me being in town. Um, maybe it was in the past. Maybe I had no part of it. But uh, at least enough that maybe there's going to be some you know, a little bit of social tension between myself and the uh, some of the colonists, perhaps. Oh, definitely. Yeah, yeah, that'll work. Uh, and Dan, uh, you're you're 
your background would work perfect for you being pre-established in, in the colony. Now keep in mind, the colony is only uh, a little over a year old, so right. even even that's not really a long time anyway. So. Okay. And as far as shipments, shipments and supplies go, um, the window for ships to come in is very small to begin with. Um, and it's, it's, it is a treacherous journey, and you guys are going to be familiar with in your first session. Um, ships are always lost en route. And you guys just happen to be some of the lucky few who actually made it. It's like a three-month window or something like that, right? What's that oh, now? Oh, there's like a favorable three-month window. Season. Right, right. Um, world setting, Are we? is it going to be um, 12 month, you know, cyclical cycle like Earth with the Yeah, we're just going to make it easy or... and go with what we're familiar with. Okay. 12 month cycle, okay. 30 days, kind of deal, so. So it's an Earth-like realm, it just has magic. Yes, very okay. much so. Uh, the magic level is going to be normal. Does that um, mean there's magical creatures like, um, I don't know, like flying, like, you know. Harpies, stuff like that, or I mean, I, I don't know GURPS magic levels, I guess, by heart. Okay, uh, as far as uh, magical creatures, yes, they do exist. Uh, in, in, in your part of the world where you're familiar with, they were rare, but known and well documented. Do they like colonization rare, or like is magic fading? Uh, magic is not fading, it's just been very controlled. Okay. So, um, it, it, would it be safe to look at the Bainstorm book and some of those creatures are going to be about what we, we could potentially uh, definitely, run into? Definitely. Okay, you so can use that, the Bainstorm book as a good guide, okay. but don't use it for background purposes. It's not going to really apply. Okay. But about that level of tech and magic and creatures and stuff like that. Right. Okay. Cool. I kind of was reading it on the plane. I just got back from Vegas, and I'm actually just now thinking coherently from that trip. Uh, <laughs> Um, okay. I will still help in identifying mon some monsters. Hey, can you guys hold on a second? I'm gonna sure, sure. I'm sorry, sure. Justin, what'd you say? Uh, uh, does uh, survival skill help identify some of the monsters that are unnatural? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you could use survival skills for that. Okay. Let's double check it. Yeah, definitely. Cool. Uh, what's the plan for this session? Do we just make characters or do we do... Uh, uh, introduction. Uh, how I, how I would like to do is once everyone has their characters designed and made, post whatever you're, you're comfortable sharing, and then during the first session, uh, we'll just go around and everyone will just uh, quickly introduce their character. Um, if especially if you have any tie-ins, like for instance Jeff and Sean plan on or having their characters come come over together and being closer friends. Um, and just let me know. And like I said, feel free to embellish and add stuff to the town. I mean, uh, like Dan, for instance, uh, you plan on being established. Uh, give me a little something on how, how, where you plan on being established and, and how. Um, so I you mean like, uh, you mean like the whole city guard structure? Exactly. Yeah. If if you if you would like to add a little something to the to to the to the game world, by all means, go for it. Because, um, like I said, this is—I okay. uh, would—I I would like everyone to participate, in, you know, in adding a little more to the world. Like Jeff was asking if um, he could add and embellish stuff to the, like, to the ogre world or the ogre culture background and stuff. By all means, feel free, feel free to. So, sorry, guys. Bedtime time for the kids. <laughs> um, where are we at time zone wise? I'm just curious. I was thinking about that a second ago. I'm in Central. I know Alex is in Central, too. I'm uh, Pacific. Okay. So it's a little earlier for you, then. Yeah. Justin? I'm in the Philippines, so I'm 12 hours behind, um, 12 hours ahead of people that are in New York time, uh, yeah. New York or New Jersey. So it's so. morning time there? Yeah, it's Sunday, 10, 22 a.m. Wow. <laughs> You know, it's funny, the 12 hour actually works for that, because it's night for us, morning for you, it's not like middle of the night for you or something crazy like that. Yeah, that's, that's the great thing about it. <laughs> My brother's 16 hours ahead, because he's in Kuwait right now, and it's like <clears throat> the opposite 
you know, it's really hard to coordinate things with them. So. Cool. Yeah, that's it's you gotta always like check the calendar where the invite falls. <laughs> <laughs> so is this gonna be a, a Saturday night game, Alex? I would I would like this to be a Saturday night game, but I'm flexible. Um, the only thing I, I really can't compromise much on is the time. Unfortunately, I've I've got three children. <laughs> Fridays and Saturday nights, uh, you know, I, I kind of I gotta wait till them for them to go to bed, and then I'm free. So it's usually gonna be nine o'clock. Uh, mm. uh, what kind of Saturday night is it going to be? Like every other Saturday? I would like to do every other Saturday if possible. Um, probably best. Uh, for it would me. work best for me if it was every other sta Saturday, starting from today's Saturday. Okay, so not this Saturday. So we'll start like we'll skip next week and the following week after. Yes. Uh, yeah. No games, problem for me. So that would be. Uh, May the 25th. So is everyone cool with May 25th? I'm good. Yes. Yeah, yeah, I'm open on the weekends as long as after 9, like you, Alex. Just get to go to bed. So. Excellent. So I'll go Can, uh, just, just curious, Dan, are you like on a cyclical work calendar? Is that why every other week some type thing? Or? No. Um, every other Saturday, or, you know, like next Saturday, I have another D&D &D group that meets. Ah. Okay. Oh, cool. Right. Cool. For me, it's I'll just every. So I gotta ask. Yeah. <laughs> so I gotta ask Dan, what what version are you playing? Uh, the DM <laughs> there is doing second edition. Oh, okay. cool, cool. I like second edition. <laughs> I haven't played second edition since high school. <laughs> <laughs> My first uh, D and D was fourth, so. Whoa! Don't don't throw a rock at me. <laughs> <laughs> How could we? You can just pity you. Yeah. Well, I, I think it was what it was total of three games, Alex, or something like that. Yeah, it was it was three, like three, three maybe or four. four, maybe four. Then we went back to GURPS pretty quick. <laughs> I did like three point five though. I will confess. I liked it until I was running it until my characters, my players, got up to I don't know around seventh or tenth level. And then as a crazy. game master, I didn't like it after that. Yeah, yeah. You just... really gotta throw everything at them. Yeah, you really gotta know yeah. your books. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's like really ca very high character inflation. It's really annoying as a GM. Yeah, yeah. That's why I wanted to start this campaign lower at 150. And honestly, I even I even thought about starting even lower than that. Because um, especially with magic, once you start adding magic into the system, GURPS characters can vary widely really fast. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I remember um, Shadowrun game. It got pretty epic pretty quick. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> when you throw strong 350-point characters around, it mm. got pretty crazy. So. Ouch. But it was, it was about 300 points, right? Yeah, I think we started at 250. Oof. Yeah. So you guys are all pretty experienced with GURPS then, eh? Pretty much. I've been playing for a while, and Jeff's been playing for a while. Uh, what's everybody else's familiarity level? Yeah, I've been playing I've read for the a while. books. Very... <laughs> I read the books a lot. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I don't know. I'm a little bit past that. I've played it a little bit. I actually... Uh, uh, Actually, 20 years ago, I actually ran a GURPS campaign, but uh, but I've never actually played it before. Uh, we, I played it with you and, and Stu mm -hmm. as a character, and it's uh, <laughs> as a game master, I think I used to fudge the rules an awful lot more, hand wave everything. <laughs> so it's uh, it's and it was a long time ago, so it'll be interesting. Is this Stu of Happy Jacks? No. Yes, yes, it is actually. Oh. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. He ran a uh, an adventure for us starting back in September that ended uh, a few months ago. Ah, that one. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, the fantasy one, right? Yeah, it was just before yeah. he started doing the live recording. Yeah. So this is a Happy Jacker game. Yeah. Well. Well, well sorta. Yeah, yeah. kinda. <laughs> Yeah, I, yeah, I, 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 I listen regularly. Uh, speaking so. of, Dan, yeah, I, I, I posted on the Roll20 group and the Happy Jacks group. Which group did you see it at? Well, 
I saw it on the Happy Jacks group first, and then uh, mm. I signed up on the Google Plus group. Okay. What about yeah. you, Dan? I saw it on the Happy Jacks. Okay, cool. So set. technically, we are all Happy Jackers here. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's that's good. That should be advertised. <laughs> <laughs> I think it says it in the Google Plus Hangout was Happy Jacks game, right? Uh, you know, I'm not sure I did or not. <laughs> I, I thought it did. Let me look. Um, <laughs> let's see. It is a great uh, douche filter. <laughs> <laughs> no, I guess not. I thought I saw that. Oh, well, um, be sure to add that when we when we post the video. <laughs> so I, you know, what's cool about the videos is I ran. Um, so do you, have you guys heard of um, a lug con? It let yeah, us yeah. game con. Um, so it's a, it's a hangout convention that a guy puts on. He's gonna do it every six, three or six months, something like that. And oh, so yeah. I, I GM'd at the first one, and um, it, it basically he has a little group set up and people sign up for. It's like a convention but digital. And um, I ran a game for that, and I put, first time I was nervous posting mine on the you know live air thing, and I had quite a few views you know watching my game and people commenting and. So was, you know, people actually like the live play. So I'm kind of excited to see if people kind of watch our games and follow us play. You know, it might might be kind of interesting. Yeah, that's really cool. Yeah. You know, I had never used any of the, the like. I had to actually help ask for a little bit of help setting up the, the streaming and stuff because I was initially going to try to record through like Camtasia or some sort of screen recording program, and my computer can't handle that. <laughs> <laughs> The on-air thing was easy. You just clicked a button and hit record, and it uploaded it to YouTube directly. Yeah, that's how uh, Twitch TV works. Is uh, uh, I just use some like little second-party type um, streaming program, and it streams it straight to Twitch TV. Nice. And Twitch's server is recorded, and once it's done, um, it, it asks me if I want to post it to YouTube. Cool. I mean, I think it'll be kind of interesting to see what if we get any followers. I'm excited. I haven't played a campaign in a long time. I've been GMing for a while. And it'll be fun just to play. Very cool. Uh, let's see. So, does anybody need any help with character generation? Uh, I know everyone's got some level of familiarity with Gertz and all, but I will. At the, at the moment, no. But uh, I guess that tomorrow I'm actually going to sit down and, and do the hard work of creating a character. So. I might be sending you a text or two. Then. Yeah, no problem. We'll yeah. see how that goes. Uh, but but the uh, the notes you've got there um, on the Dark Shore site look pretty good. Uh, looks like you've got a few glitches in the languages and whatnot, but it's uh, it's easy enough to figure out what you meant to say. Yeah, definitely. If you guys notice anything that um, contradicts it, it itself, just let me know. Or you guys see mistakes or whatever, uh, feel free to jump in and fix it or whatever. Um, like I said, I want everyone to feel uh, welcome in participating at the Obsidian site. That was another thing. Uh, uh, updates. If you guys want to add a, a page, like say, um, Dan, like your character, uh, I believe you were going to open a shop or something, or you were going to be invested in the town. If you want to write a page yeah. on that location or whatever, go for it, man. Write the page. I give, I'll get bonus points. So if you write a page in your location or whatever, you add it, add something to the map or whatever bonus points you write uh like justin for instance uh you've got an npc ally potentially uh you post post that npc ally or whatever you maybe write a little blur background you get uh, bonus points for that and those bonus points can be spent on anything you want um, with team approval of course as well as you can just save them for what we talked about earlier on the, <laughs> um, spending character points to turn uh failures and critical failures into successes and stuff so what about um? What about in person? Um, kind of when you write your venture log, if we put our in person, yes, or in uh, character. I'm sorry, in character viewpoint. Yeah, that I, I like. I like doing that as bonus points as well. So, like uh, after an adventure, if you would like to write up your character's version of what went down that game session, but from their perspective, um, that's a bonus point. Um, what I what I would like to do is what I try to do is I try to post a quick overview, very very short, just bare bone details and then if you want to add your character's perspective just do it below I just ask that you don't go and delete um, the original poster 
Okay. Okay. Thank you. Um, any problems with a little bit of beer drinking during the game, or I don't have any problems so long as uh, you can still speak properly and you're not <laughs> falling out of your chair. <laughs> okay. Just checking. <laughs> not a problem. I don't care about that. Um, so, do we have names? Say again. Character name. Do we have character names already? Yes. Not yet. <laughs> I think I'm the only one who hasn't come up with one yet. Well, mine is uh, a placeholder. It's, it's Grok right now, but it might definitely change depending on, you know, how my guy. Uh, um, uh, Sean, you have a character name for my notes? I don't yet, Justin. Uh, I've, I've oh, yeah. just got a vague concept together so far. Name You're or, the goblin. I am the uh, goblin. Okay. My character is Wilco, the retired guard. Oh, yeah, you're the gumshoe. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Yeah, I really That's like right. that concept. <clears throat> Justin, uh, what's your race? Is it going to be a uh, human or? Uh, yeah, it's um, well, there's a very uh, 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 well, this Irish -ish human. He's a uh, amaranth green, red hair. Uh, copper hair, you know, looks Irish. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, it's perfect because it's kind of like a, a new world settling colonial thing. So it's um, just a scout. So I want to hopefully tie him up, tie him in with everyone else's background. Uh, uh, high observation, high perception character. Uh, spear uh, spear wielder. Um, have you guys heard about Ikewa? The... Zulu-ish weapon. Mm -mm. Oh, no, no, no. no. <laughs> but I can look uh, it up. Like I got Google. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. It's it's that spear that has a blade as big as a short sword. Okay, so it's oh. sort of like a Naginata. Yeah, but mm. hell cheaper. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I use it like... I kind of use it like a sword, but I use I have two of them. And I have a normal long spear, a normal spear that's, you know, typically long. Okay. Can you so, spell that for me, Justin? Uh, it's I K L W A I K L W A. Okay. Uh, yeah. There's some. Um, uh, there's this zombie themed um, weapon maker that made some um, some toy version. Well, it's real, but a really nice version of the Ikoa. It's very. Ever since I first saw it, it was like very attractive because it's a spear that's a sword. That's yeah, it's it's big. I'm spear. looking at it now. Yeah, it's a nice looking, <laughs> nice looking weapon. Interesting. Yeah, I'm just, you know, it's culturally uh, Zulu, but I'm assuming uh, some cultures have it also. But that's the nicest version of a spear. One of the nicest spears I've ever seen. <laughs> well, it's, yeah, it's cool to have kind of a unique uh, fighting style for sure. Yeah. The whole scout with a two weapon fighting. <laughs> well, at least it's a spear. <laughs> oh, that's right. Yeah. Uh, Alex, do you say uh, no cinematic skills? Uh, cinematic skills are allowed. I'm going to allow cinematic skills, um, but, but keep in mind, again, since this is, this is, is GURPS, uh, do expect a level of greediness to go along with those cinematic skills. So, like, if you, you, if you do, what's the one where, uh, okay, like, hey, for instance, a magical spell, Burning Death. Uh, burning Death, the, they're going to have real repercussions. So if, like, you burn someone for 12 points of damage, that's a lot of severe damage. You're going to feel the effects of it. You're gonna start making help checks, that that kind of uh, deal. So there will, there's, it's not gonna be wowish in the sense that don't expect That's... miracle healings. <laughs> okay. Unless of course you buy those heal. Okay. Um, well, that's another thing. Fire gonna... damage. Sorry. Oh no, no Sorry. I, I was I was just gonna elaborate on the magic. Uh, magic in, in this in this colony is going to be. Uh, I don't. I don't want to say restricted heavily, but it's going to be monitored. Um, everyone who comes over, um, 
a lot of the magic people, anyone who knows magic, are utilized in defending the town and establishing the town. The, the colony is right now, as it stands, barely surviving on its own. So you got number of shipments only come once a year. Uh, you guys are having to rely on your own farming within the walls of the town. Um, and a little bit of trade that goes on with some of the smaller local tribes. And as far as ogres and goblins are concerned and stuff like that, uh, the natives do speak a dialect of, of what is recognizable to their counterparts in the other world. But there are changes that aren't quite the same. So, for instance, a goblin from your side of the world to this side of the world will understand what they're saying, but it will be considered um, uh, broken. On the on the on the on the language chart. Okay. So, so kind of the concept I was noodling in my head was to have my guy actually, at, at some point from the, this actually part of the, the world, um, is is it feasibly possible for me and um, Sean's character to meet if that happened, or the world's completely this is like a complete new world wasn't um, explored as part of before the war. Um, is it possible, or I mean, I, I'm just trying to make sure if not all shift over to the other continent. Oh no, no, no. It, it's it's very possible. So that, that's um, I don't know if you guys have looked at the map, but there's very little that I've added to the map at all. I mean, it's basically just a it's a blank template sort of. You can make of it whatever you want. You can guys can point to a spot and say that's where I want to establish my 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 home, or this is where I want to set a base at, or, or whatever. Um, the only thing that's really kind of mapped is, 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 like I said, a, a very general overlay. Otherwise, it's all wild. <laughs> you don't so really know that what's at? up there. I see the map, but it's just a map of the city. Isn't I missing something? Yeah, yeah, yeah it's just a city map. Okay. That's all. So, but is this continent, like, so new, kind of like the New World was, was completely isolated? Yes, yes, completely, okay. completely unmapped. You don't know what the borders look like. Like I said, this is the, this is the first foothold that okay. the human empire has gotten. So the war that happened um, a while ago, generations ago, um, it was completely isolated from this area. There was none of that going on here at all. Right, right. Okay. Right. So we could both be natives if, uh, if you wanted, if we we're going to tie each other together. Well, or I could be from there. It's not a big deal. So we, we can sort it out. I just was trying yeah. to get the, okay. the geography in my head so I knew you know, how to proceed. Uh, can somebody be the native? That way his area knowledge would be advantageous to you. <laughs> it would be. <laughs> right. It would be very handy. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> it it and, defaults and to navigation minus three also. So, and and story-wise, it would work out stuff. fine, too. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Yeah. Sorry, sorry. Uh, 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 area knowledge defaults to navigation minus three. It defaults to it's practically survive basic survival. You know the stat, the highest status person. You know some of the laws. You know some of the uh, other neighbors at least. Uh, um, I I I want to take uh, a local dialect that accepted. Uh, is there a recommended dialect that I can take? Um, as far as you mean the, lo the local language? Yeah, I mean the native. Yeah, yeah. Um, ethnic language. Yeah. Just, just call it. Just whenever you put it in on your character sheet, just call it. Uh, just call it native. So okay. like a goblin. A goblin. A goblin and orc is gonna probably be the two bigger native languages, because like I said, there's there's some smaller goblin and orc tribes in your area um, and those are the ones that every every now and then they they'll, they'll get a little brave and they'll, they'll try to raid the city in fact in the beginning of the colony that was the biggest problem with establishing the the, the colony was uh, they, they were constantly getting raided and attacked um, now you've got now that the town is established and uh, defend, defendable perimeters are set up and stuff like that um, a very uneasy treaty has been reached with the local tribes. Some trading takes place. Um, I wouldn't go so far as to say they're friendly towards uh, the colony, but they're more uh, 
they're a little more open minded to, to open trade. Mm, okay. Um, so, yes, sorry. No, go ahead. You were talking first. No, uh, uh, nothing, just a pet one. <laughs> you can go first. Um, so if if the colony's only been open a year, is it feasible for us to be able to have native knowledge, uh, native um and the native tongue down? Like for example, if I'm a I'm a um, ogre and there's local ogres. Is it feasible for me to in the year that it's been if I started from the, maybe the first settlers? Could I get that dialect down, or is it still going to be considered kind of the out? You know, kind of. It would definitely center? be possible. It would definitely be possible. I mean, you got to keep in mind with magic, anything is possible. Uh, there's there's the spell uh, that allows you to actually take language levels away from a from a character. And it should permanently take them on your as your own, and it, okay. however you want to write that in it is up to you. So like maybe you know some of the first few ships came in with mages who knew that spell, and the first thing they're going to do, of course, oh. is try to speak to the, the natives, taking a little okay. bit of their knowledge and their dialect and teaching it to everybody to everybody else. Um, that isn't to say that everyone's going to know it, but uh, by all means, there there's probably going to be a few who do who, who can communicate and trade. Okay, so it's in the realm of possibility. Okay, cool. Okay. Um, so okay, we're fast friends, but I'm the one that's just arrived, and because I don't have area knowledge, I can squeeze maybe a point for area knowledge. <laughs> yeah, it's because it it'll be weird if I I have to really get area knowledge to to at least you know explain why I know where to go. Uh, well, I guess I'm gonna invest in that. I mean, it could be part of the uh, the drama, though. If you're a guide in a un in an unknown area, that would um, give you some character drama. If you didn't know that, and then it would show some progression, you know, as you kind of learn the area. So it's not necessarily not necessarily a bad thing. Yeah, that'd um, be cool. Yeah, I'll I'll because um, as I'm learning more about the game now, I'm thinking. Um, the character was a scout from back in the east, or we're coming from the west. It doesn't really matter. Are, are we in the east I, coast or west? We can coast? call it. We can call it uh, west. West. You guys are coming okay. from the west. You came from the west. You came from the west. Okay. Sorry. Okay. So if you came from the west, I'm thinking um, uh, back there. It's overcrowded. It has all the same um, historical reasons why people would go here. I guess I I would be completely trained in as a scout, but having been here now, I have the opportunity to start a life where I don't have to be always in combat. So my character motivation would be to grow here, you know, build roots. But since I'm only a scout, I need to learn to trade. I need to learn to organize, maybe build a homestead, farm, and stuff like that. Oh, definitely. It's like Sean... Sean uh pointed out it, it's it's a lot like the American colonies initially when they first set out it's a land grab <laughs> this, oh, is, this is a great yeah. opportunity for anyone uh, to, to start over you know and to really set like you like you had just said Justin to, to set down roots and to establish themselves as something more than what they were before mm, perfect oh, yeah, that's and, cool. and Justin you you know one thought that popped my head up something to be cool if you could have been part of the original um, scouting uh, before they established the colony, um, they yeah. probably had to need scouts to um, look at the different land masses and where the swamps and all that are. If you've been part of that first area, um, you would know the area probably better than anybody. Um, mm -hmm. Good point. I mean, if you're a trained scout and that's your job, I know in the New World that's what they sent expeditions before they sent entire colonies sometimes. Not always, and sometimes they ended very poorly. Um, but sometimes they sent yeah. like a small scouting expedition to establish a foothold. Um, so I don't know. It's just a thought. Yeah, I'll I'll be one of those. I'll try to get the points to bring up my area knowledge to uh, four points. That will explain my ability to uh, navigate the area very well. Cool. Okay. I'll use up some of my <laughs> reserve points. <laughs> But hey, you can always earn bonus points as well. Remember, you just even even though the game hasn't started. Mm. Um, oh yeah, the history stuff. Okay, I can I can have several complications that will make things interesting for the game. 
like um, oh, there's so many hazards in the founding economy. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. Oh, that was the thing I would go over real quick on the map. Um, I don't know. If, I think everyone should be looking at the map right now. Is that right? Yeah, I can see it. Yeah, okay. I'm it up. Uh, the big stone wall, of course, is, is a stone wall <laughs> or stone perimeter going up. It hasn't been complete. You've got the, the larger... Uh, here we go. <laughs> You've got these uh, watchtowers that are going to be integrated into the tower when it is complete. Um, if you look inside, uh, you see a, a brown perimeter. That's basically a large, very, very tall, about 15 feet tall uh, wooden fence that has been temporarily erected until the outer wall is complete. Um, the big green masses are... Um, our local farming, but it's by no means uh, enough to sustain everyone. So it, you guys do still rely on rely on outside trade, and the big green field is the marked place where the emperor's new palace is going to be built. Um, construction has been very very slow, but it hasn't begun. So is this the emperor of the new land or the? Um, no, this is going to be the this is going to be the western. Ranch. Basically, imagine, yeah, yeah. This this is his home away from home. <laughs> hmm. Okay, so he's basically marking his territory, saying, "I build a palace. Right. I own this." Okay. Right. Other than no, other than that, the only place that has been mapped is uh, there's a tavern dead center in the town. It was the first one of the first buildings that went up. It's a large tavern that acts sort of like a um, a way station for for people coming in. Uh, can I put Lady Alice over there in that tavern? Sure. And yeah, definitely. Like Carson. <laughs> 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 oh, that was I was going to say. Uh, wealth levels, and I know uh, Sean was asking about it earlier. I'm sorry, not Sean. Uh, Justin, uh, Dan, sorry. Dan yeah. was asking about earlier stuff about legal enforcement powers. Uh, legal enforcement powers, I did not mark it on the site, but feel free to buy legal enforcement powers. Um, I think the highest I'm willing anyone to go would be... Um, like maybe constable in charge of like a small squad of soldiers. So I think that's somewhere okay. along the lines of like a sergeant in the book, I think. And as far okay. as um, wealth goes, you can be as rich as you want as long as you spend the points. <laughs> mm. Would it be feasible for me to um, potentially get a little employment by um, doing some shamanistic magic to help the crops grow? Because they're probably having some food issues. Oh, definitely. Okay. So maybe I'll... I know there's some spells and gurps I can take to help grow food um, and make a little cash out doing that. Yeah, yeah, definitely. We, and all that kind of stuff will be covered in off time, you know. Uh, that, that's what I was going to say. If, if anyone has a bonus, again, uh, if you want to earn a bonus point... Uh, make write write a little uh, interlude, uh, a little prelude to to the next to the first session. Uh, a little historical background and your first arrival in the colony. Okay. Or maybe your ship journey to the colony type thing. Um, like I said, more material for me to to farm and, and and be able to integrate into the story. So. Cool. Mm, okay. Like Stu says, someone's gonna form a strip club. We better do it. So <laughs> <laughs> I'm fully expecting there to be a strip joint at some point in this town, <laughs> run by one of us. Mm, or the backup characters. <laughs> one of the guys. Yeah. yeah. Have Put some them. NPCs in reserve just in case. Put them NPC allies to work for you. Yeah. Imagine a uh, all ogre uh, nude bar. Kind of, uh, oh, kind of yeah, I want to imagine that. <laughs> a, little dis a little disturbing, <laughs> but they but they cater to a very specific clientele. So <laughs> you never know. 
So uh, one thing I want to ask you, Alex, um, what is your feeling on if one of us are absent, at what percentage do we game versus not game? Um, I've struggled with that in the group I run. You know, I want everybody to be there, but I've noticed I haven't played in two months because of that. <laughs> so w w what is your general you know, rule of thumb for that? Um, minimum two players. If a player can't make it, we will go on without them. If two players can't make it, uh, what we'll probably do is do something like a small little interlude type thing. So rather than following the main storyline, I'd, I'd still like to play, but I don't want to leave half the party out. So maybe we'll do something like a little interlude, something that happens between the, the main game. You know what I mean? Okay, so three for business as usual, two for doing something. Right, like a small okay. little interlude. You know, but the fluff episode. <laughs> okay. Great. Uh, yeah, yeah. It'd be better to get that up now than when someone's not there and figuring out how to Exactly. Do no, good. I'm glad you brought that up. Um, and then if we only have one okay. player, of course, we're just going to cancel. Okay. Mm. And, uh, uh, sorry. We could always have an off game, too. Like, if there's, like, two people and we don't, we're in the middle of a major battle, we could always do, like, a, you know, oh, yeah, yeah. like a one shot or something. Because I need to get my fix, man. It's only twice a month, man. i got to get it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like a five-point disadvantage. <laughs> yes. So I have to get the shakes. <laughs> um, do we want to test out Roll20 while we're all here? Oh, yeah. Yeah, so we everybody can try that combat, too. Yeah. I mean, let's, we're all here. I mean, if we have some time. Yeah, let me... Um... Because the first session will be spent figuring that out if we don't do it now. Okay. Let's see. We'll go over here. Do that. Nice. This is just a default map I set up. Let me go to. Oh yeah, we can choose our tokens. Mm -hmm. I'm loading mine right now. Let's see. Now, how do? It's so weird. I've always been on the GM screen. <laughs> yeah. I have less. I have less things than I'm used to. I'm like, what? Okay. <laughs> Opening my library. It's moving a little slow here. Oh, it's five point. It's a five foot uh, hex. All right, you know, I will go ahead and give you guys the first floor of the tavern because I was playing around with it a little bit earlier. Let me nice. go there. Okay, here we go. I don't know nice. how well that came through. It, oh, looks, it looks pretty great. It looks good. My yeah. No, it looks good to me. Oh, there it goes. Okay, now it cleared up. Okay, yeah, so like this, this is the first floor of the tavern. Um, yeah, it takes a few seconds to clear up, but it looks good once it's up. Okay, cool. And then uh, let's see. I will. Oh, uh, that was the other thing. Uh, if you have, if you find an icon or something you like, um, just email it to me, and I'll load it into uh, the okay. map. I, I think you guys can drop stuff too on there, right? Can you guys drop um, pictures? No. Let me test a no. pod real quick. Is that Doesn't a setting? Work? Can I turn that? I'm not sure. Um, let me play with it for a second. Nice. Like I said, I've never been on this side of the fence, so. Because I know as GM, I can drop stuff. But yeah, I'm gonna try. To, I'm gonna try to drop a token I made from other game on. I tried dragging it and dropping it, so yeah. Okay, it, uh, so loaded, it loaded the image in my internet, well, my Chrome screen. Gotcha. Right, you know, you can drag and drop like pictures, so yeah, that doesn't work too well. Okay. So don't try that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so if, like I said, if you guys find a token you like, uh, send it to me, and I will add it to the library, and we can use that. Um, so, uh, quick question: Are we using the digital dice roll, or are we going to roll on our desk? 
Uh, you know, I would like for you guys to use digital dice roller, but if you prefer a table, that's cool too. It doesn't really matter. Okay. Um, do you mind if I offer some hints for Roll20 real quick? Alex? Definitely, dude. Yeah, definitely. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so one thing that'll help is everybody should set up a macro for 3D6. Um, if you click on the... So we're in, we're in Google Hangouts, right? So they're... The way it works in Roll20 is there's actual Roll20s in the screen, so there's Roll20 settings at the, in the middle, and then up to the top there's Google Hangout settings. So there's a cog kind of below the primary cog for settings. You click on that um, in the Roll20 section. There's a way to make macros, and so what I what I would do is make a macro for your primary role, which for GURPS 3D6, right? Um, does GURPS, GURPS doesn't explode, right? No, no exploding no, dice. No. So just roll, just, um, let me show you the um, template real quick. I, I did one bad. just like exactly what you did, and let's see. Did so that you work? Do four, in the action, you roll, four slash roll, 3d6. It's pretty simple. When they're exploding, you have to add exclamation points. It's a little harder, but. And then what you do is you click the in bar checkbox, and it puts a little um, checkbox for you. I just did a but quick that, roll. Did everybody see that, or was that hidden? Yeah. Oh, I got uh, it. Yeah. Got it. Okay. So step number two to make your life more sane is if you go to the settings pane like you were at for the macros, at the very bottom you see player avatar size, change that to name only. And that'll give you a lot more space real estate back. Right. Yeah, that's good. Um, and for some reason my macro is not appearing. Hmm. Yeah, the Mac. When I hit my macro, it's not showing in the screen like it's supposed to. Like what it has when you check in bar, it should be a button you can click. You click the button, then it rolls the dice for you. Can everyone see the icons I draw? I just want to make sure that I'm doing this correctly. I can see them. Yep. I can see some two, two guys. <laughs> yeah. yeah, two guys in the tavern. What's your daughter holding? <laughs> Hang on here. Did you say you can't see them, Sean? Uh, just trying to figure out how to drag the tavern around here because it wasn't really too well centered. And yeah, I can see them. Okay, good deal. Okay, so what you guys have to do for the macro is click in bar, and then below it hit show macro quick bar. And then you'll get a quick bar button. You just click for when you want to roll. And so what I do is, is I set up a, one for my roll, and then I set one for my common weapon because weapons get damage can be pretty. So, you know, and then you could just roll it and then add whatever your modifiers are to it. And the way it speeds things up a little with the die, rather than have to type, you know, roll 3d6 every time. Okay. So, Alex, you should be able to assign us uh, permissions to each of those tokens you put, and then we can move them around. Okay, let me try. So, you click on it, go to settings, and then the drop down, you just give one of us permission. Um, all players can see. Edit controlling player can view. Oop, I just drew something. New character representation. Oh, cool. Okay. Controlled by. Da -da -da -da. Okay, excellent. So then I could drop your character token and just assign it to, to that player. Yep, and they can move them. Very cool. And, and in, we can also assign our own stats to it. Like if you take a, well, it's not savage rule, but if you took like a wound or fatigue levels, you can put it in there yourself. Cool. All right. <laughs> okay. Oh. Can move anybody else's stuff around. I can, can you like... sign it? Can you sign it to one of us so we can test see if we can move it? Oh, definitely. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so here, and uh, I'm gonna give the first one to Let's see who comes up for uh, scout. Morant. And save. All right. So Justin, you should be in charge. You should be able to move around the one in the top right. Top right. 
in the, in the tavern. Yeah, the one the one with the spear. And then let's see who's next. Uh, oh, Jeff? sorry. Got it. Thank you. Can you move it around? Yep. Oh, excellent. Uh, we could there. change positionings and stuff too. Huh. Uh, so, can I have access to the bar, to the health bar, so that I can relieve you of having to to affect his uh, health and fatigue? Oh, uh, I don't know. Can you? I don't. I don't know. Um, um, I, I know we can your... put dots, but I don't know if we can actually. Oh, there we go. Uh, player permissions bar one. Yeah. 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 Okay. Oh, okay. Cool. So edit. Let's see. Do all of that. Save. And we'll try on this one. Okay. Uh, you guys should be able to edit those bars now. Yep. Nice. Okay. Thank you. I'll uh, set it up. So that's uh, 11 strings. 10. And then Sean, I'll give you the skeleton just to play around there. What you want to do, Alex, probably, is uh, when, before you give control to us, resize it to fix your hex grid. Um, for normal people, normal player size, obviously. And that way they'll snap to the hex a little more. Easier. Mm, yeah. It's a bit too big. <laughs> and then Dan, I'm giving you control over this last one just to mess around. See. Okay, cool. Um, nice. Macros were cool. Um, Alex, also, if you you'll be able to pull up a uh, turn tracker too. Uh, if you click on the, um, I think it looks like a clock in your GM toolbar. Oh, there we go. Cool. And what you can do is you can drag tokens. Uh, you can right click on a token and say add turn order. And then we can put our movement stats in there, like who goes first. Um, okay. So it's basically like you know the little the little whiteboard one we used in person. It's like a digital version of that. Nice. Sorry, cool. just checking right. if the macros working. I see me played. Ah. Where was okay, that? Okay, there. Right click token. Okay. Yeah, you right click and hit add to turn. And it should show our name in there. And then we can put in our turn order um, in there. It's cool in Savage Rules because there's a card mechanic built in a, this system. And I can drag the card into the um, turn order, too. That's really cool. I like that. So I don't know if we can adjust the numbers, or I think maybe it might be GM only. Um, you should be able to click in there and put, like... I think once I assign them to, to you guys, you guys can adjust the numbers as well now. Okay. Go ahead and assign the red one... Up to the tornado, I'll see if I can play around with it. Yeah, I can. So I can put like, you know, my my speed is twelve or whatever, and everybody should be able to see that. Uh, the key is once you put your numbers, hit enter. If you click out, it doesn't take effect. You have to type in your number, press enter, and then it, and then it registers in the tornado. Okay. And then Alex, you should be able to actually drag them around for whoever. When you finally got our turn order down, you can drag them first come, like you just did. Cool. Uh, question. Yep. Uh, Alex, how does your um, spot rolls work? Does uh, range factor into uh, your spot rolls? For spot rolls, uh, usually no. Unless it's something really, really small, then I'll, I'll arbitrarily assign a number. Like if you walk into a room and you're looking for a very small, we'll say like a key in a dark room, then I might assign like a negative five or six to it. And then no I'll have you roll and you know, I'll have a target number in mind that you have to hit. So. Okay, I just need to know how uh, 
spot uh, rows are typically resolved. Uh, wish you can like have a test out the combat. <laughs> If you guys click and hold on the map with the cursor, it'll ping it, so you can know, like, hey, I want to go here, or I'm aiming for this, whatever. And it's color-coded by our player color, down on the bottom. I still have the second floor posted up there too. I'll be back in a second. Yeah, no problem. So, are you using um, line of sight? And then, um, is that why it's black? Yeah. Okay. You're doing like, what do you do? Like a reveal thing when you want to show a certain. Yeah, I can I can uh, go to reveal area. So like, if I want to reveal like let's say the kitchen, I can just go like that. And now you guys can go see the kitchen. Okay, cool. I've actually never used this part of it, so that's cool. Never played around with it before. That's a pretty big tavern. It is. It is. I guess I'll Is there any any anything anyone had any questions on on this part of it? Yeah, we're we going to get down to like doing measurements with this or we just kind of kind of abstract it or I just okay. estimate uh, as as far as like range and stuff is concerned, I really don't want to get too much into it so like we might, you know, if it really, if, if, if for the most part, even bows have a pretty decent range, you're rarely going to be in, in, in half damage or maximum half damage. You're rarely going to go into full range, you know what I mean? Yeah, that's so, like 200 hexes. Right, yeah, we're not going <laughs> to uh, count 200 hexes out. Hexes out. So. Yeah. Oh, I think the setting is in feet. It's uh, uh, five feet per. Uh, X. It's a three. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's a yard. Sure. But again, the only time I'm going to use range modifiers is really for like cold shots. So like, you know, someone's across the room, you're going to shoot them with a bow. Okay, cool. I might throw some modifiers in there if it's dark, like maybe a negative two. You're shooting for the head, negative five. So now you're looking at negative seven. Okay. Okay. But I'm not going to sit there and have you count out the hexes. Um, as far as that's concerned, or get too deep into, I don't want this to turn into a heavy strategy or tactician's game because, like I said, I, I think playing uh, through roll twenty is is going to make things a little harder than if we were at a table. I don't I don't want to get too crunchy with the numbers. Okay. So this would be more of a situational awareness rather than. Tactical D and D fourth edition where we're right, yeah, you know, and the, the same thing way. goes for the same thing goes for facings and stuff. I know GURPS can get real detailed with facings, you know, if they're on your off weapon side and um, 
the shield side versus weapon side, your additional negative, and if you're having to stab them on your off side, stuff like that. I, I really don't want to get into all of that. I mean, it, like I said, groups can get really crunchy fast <laughs> if you let it. Yeah. Uh, cool. Reminds me. <laughs> Uh, I have a very tactical GURPS game uh, next Saturday. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I saw I saw you posted that, and uh, if I can jump in that, I wouldn't mind trying that out. Yeah, you can. It's um, I, one of the things I realized is even though you have six players, people oh, there's always fallout, so it always tends to be like uh, it's always like five or four. I have a traveler game, even though it's so open and anyone can jump in, we always hit four or five players. How, how, does, how does the game run with more players than four? Because that, that's the one, my one concern. That's why, I, that's why I limited this game to just four players because I didn't want it to get too uh, crazy. I'm trying, I'm working off uh, Tappy's theory. I was hoping that it'll work. The, that uh, on an online game, it can be much faster. Um, you can handle more players because you have they have to all type in their answers and you resolve it based on uh, like what they type, not what they say. Because if you have to process whatever they say, we're going to wait for each other to, to speak. So it's going to take even much longer. Gotcha. Yeah. Um, Backlab, uh, the guy running... Gladiator, he because he tracks the chat log, he he will work on what you type as your action. Oh, okay. That way, it's it's much faster. So you like, so you um, guys aren't using video for that? Ah, uh, he, he not much. He he has a dial up, so he he really needs to work off the chat. Oh, okay. No, no. I actually ran in the game uh, last year that was. Nothing but chat run, chat based. There was no video or even uh, or audio. It was just all chat based RPG. It was, it was it was very cool. It was it was kind of neat because you could really get into detail as far as what you're doing. Um, and again, he did the same thing. We copied the dialogue afterwards and just posted it to the site to the Obsidian portal. Yeah, yeah. It's Tappy said some. Thing about like it's using the the medium to kind of like slow down your players but and make it easier for you to digest the information I, I haven't seen a way to do it yet so I'm hoping I'll uh, behind the GM screen I get to see what he's what he means by it yeah okay I'm, I'm I'm gonna. I'm making a token, so uh, <laughs> sorry. I'll be a bit quiet. <laughs> oh no problem. Well, I think we covered a lot today. Uh, so I mean, like, if you guys have anything else to do, uh, feel free to drop out if you need to. I know it's late, and I told you guys only an hour. But uh, honestly, I, I'm just sitting here messing around a little bit with what I can do on the GMs, and so <laughs> no rush. <Cool. laughs> Hey, Sean, do you want to either take this offline or just kind of start discussing maybe how we want to fit in our backstories together? Sure. Um, Whenever you have know. time. Yeah, well, we can do that, or we can just run it as an ongoing chat while we're doing other things if you want. I'm, I'm fine um, with that. Okay. Okay, yeah, let's just keep that uh, chat line going between us. Okay. We can work that out. Yeah, and it doesn't have to be perfect. I mean, I, we, we can have it evolve as we go. We just need kind of a start and starting point. Mm. I, I'm sure it will change. Uh, Alex, are you okay with things slightly being retcon? You know, first couple games as we kind of get a feel for it. Yeah, our I don't characters? mind at all. No, that's not a big deal. Okay, oh, that's good. Yeah, that's nice. Yeah, because yeah, I mean, good. we might figure out. I might get in the game and realize that the way I design them. I haven't played groups in a while, and I haven't done many casters and groups. Like, I might realize totally not what I. You know, sign up for. Yeah, definitely. No, especially with magic. I completely understand. I've been in the spot where, you know, you get in this position, you're like, I really intended to get that spell, but now I don't have it. <laughs> or you realize, I just invested 10 points to get this one stupid spell, and I'm never going to use it. <laughs> okay, cool. So, definitely. 
Well, so either way, Sean, if I decide to go like an ogre, a um, that's a brute, or a, like a shaman, I don't think it should affect um, kind of our relationship. So we can still work through that, figure out. Um, I was leaning to being maybe a native, if possible. Um, I guess I could be. Um, has any of? Let me ask you, Alex. Has any of the native tribes ever made it to other shores, um, or is that completely too far apart for that to be even feasible? That you know, honestly, that's completely up to you. If you do something like that, though. Um, just let me know. Yeah. What about like some sort of magical maelstrom where I was working up something and I got teleported? Yeah, definitely. Oh. I want to make it to where your character has a little more worldly knowledge than the rest of uh, the locals in this area. Cool. Well, that I mean, would give me an opportunity to kind of keep local, but also have a chance to meet up a Sean character in the new world and come back, given the opportunity to come back to maybe something happened where I was teleported. Um, and I've been separated for a, a length of time. Yeah, that'd be cool. Okay, so pretty much up, however I want to work that. Like I said, I, w I want you guys to feel feel free to embellish and to add to the, to the world um, as much as you like. Okay. okay. It's a pretty blank template, and uh, I want everyone to participate as much as they feel comfortable. That's cool. That sounds like we've got quite a bit of room to maneuver there then. I mean, there's no reason why these natives have to be quite so uh, quite so primitive either. We could maybe uh, maybe they've been uh, sailing over the other direction for a little while now. Yeah, definitely. In the, in the New World of Vikings, there's evidence that they might have done it way before. Yeah. The, um, you know. I think that's been confirmed, uh, that evidence. The, they found the. Uh, I mean, I think I read the article that has a journal confirming it. Finally, yeah, there's like right. They found like, like a ship, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I mean, it's feasible that maybe some primitives able to get across through sheer luck. They found like um, a small Viking ship where it shouldn't have been. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. No. Right. And they found some trade goods up uh, quite a ways north, too, just recently. Oh, really? Yeah. There's, uh, like, you know, it's kind of thought that they landed around Labrador now, but just way, way up the uh, the coast in the, in the north, they found some, some trade goods. Yeah, wow. Like Viking trade goods? Um, these, as I recall, were native trade goods, but they showed signs that they'd been uh, that they had some European influences. Oh wow! So that means um, they, they had established a little bit then. They had, uh, yeah. Well, yeah. Well, it's hard to say. I mean, it, unfortunately, it doesn't tell you a whole lot. But they had like little uh, figurines with beards on them. Um, huh. So. Uh, so they figured that yes, these were something that the natives had made that were obviously images of Vikings rather than of themselves. Wow, cool. Yeah. And then with magic, anything is possible too. So that's right. <laughs> There's the oh, it's magic. <laughs> well, yeah. Especially if you're a shaman, yeah, you could have been spirit walking. Yeah, or kind of mm. pissed off some sort of vengeful spirit animal. Yeah, and right, yeah. Kicked me onto, you know, a couple hundred thousand miles away. That would that would definitely get you out of its hair for a while. Yeah. Hmm, well, I got some ideas floating in my head, so I'll have to see if that. Okay, yeah. There we go. Yeah. As far as this tavern is concerned, I was going to add a little more. That I imagine this tavern is sort of like a like an Ellis Island type situation. Whenever the ships come in, um, a majority of the people will land here at the tavern for at least a couple of days until they settle in and whatnot. There's, um, I think the count is over over a hundred people can be accommodated at this tavern. So some take permanent residency, some don't. Uh, the second floor and the third floor actually have large penthouse type rooms. For permanent residences, um, wow! So it's big then. Yeah, it's it's pretty large. It's pretty large. Um, let's see. I can reveal. I imagine before the walls were put up, it probably had to be pretty well defendable as well. So yes, it's all it's made out of it's made out of stone. Very few of the buildings in town are made out of stone, but the tavern is. Okay. 
Uh, most of the most of the town's buildings are constructed of local lumber. Uh, if you look at this, if you if you glance at the city map, you'll see that um, the the wooden fence is constructed all out of local. If you look outside the wall, you'll see you'll see all the lumber that was that was removed. There's still hundreds and hundreds of tree stumps just decimated where they just took down local lumber and dragged it into town and used that. Yeah, makes sense. It was easy. And they needed to clear it out anyway, so. Right. Yes. And the town so, kind of sits in between of, uh, in between like a plains area by the beachfront and a big heavy forest that continues on east. Um, is there magical weapons? Um, is it that level of magic, or um, magic is? I'm going to use magic straight out of the book. So magic is very uh, available. Um, okay. The more powerful the item, the more expensive it gets because the longer it takes to enchant. So, for example, a plus one sword to damage won't be necessarily uncommon. It'll be expensive, but not unreachable, unattainable. Uh, a wealthy person could easily afford a plus two or plus one damage weapon, but once you start getting into like plus three to damage, you start getting uh, what is it? Pusinance uh, plus or uh, it de negates DR or negates uh, armor piercing stuff. Armor piercing stuff. The bigger bonuses are going to cost more. Okay. A lot more. It, it, it's it's a it's a very steep scale. But if anyone's interested in stuff like that, you can purchase signature gear. You can use character points. One point is equal to... Oh, don't get me lying. But basically, yeah. money equates to... Is it 500? Yeah. It's 1,000 DL3, right? Yeah. Yeah. Tech level 3. So, so basically, you can use character points to buy stuff that would normally cost money. So if you want that plus 3 weapon magic you normally wouldn't be able to afford it with your with your wealth level you can with signature gear I, th I think justin should have a two uh spears one fire one ice <laughs> <laughs> i think that's what he should do and an ally panther yes i think that should be a given yeah. and he's an outcast from his society <laughs> <laughs> Cool. Well, I'm going to drop um, if, if we're kind of wrapping up. Yeah, I think so. I think we covered pretty much uh, all the main stuff that I wanted to touch on. Um, anybody have any last-minute questions or anything? Uh, oh, actually, one popped up for me about GCA. Uh -huh. um, I added the Ogre Templin GCA, but it didn't show it in my character sheet, the advantage and disadds that I get from that. Uh -huh. um, it looks like it took the points out appropriately, but not... Um, so I don't know if I'm doing something wrong or not. I added the Ogre Bainstorm um, data file in the GCA and added the template, but it it didn't quite uh, like show my character. I thought it would, right? Oh, you, it, you only see the template, right? I only see the template. It doesn't say what I got right. from it. Right. You have to uh, you have to unhide it. Um, is that an option or something? Maybe. Yeah, yeah. Let me open GCA real fast. There's a you have to load up a, a data file to unhide that information to display in your character sheet. Well, I added the Bainstorm data file into the data sets. Um, yeah, Bainstorm um, fourth E. If you go to add, I can't remember exactly where it is, but there's an option. To, uh, it says unhide template. I'm looking right now. The program's opening. Yeah, otherwise it'll only display the template and the cost. It won't show you the details of the template, the advantages and disadvantages and stuff. And it won't. It doesn't even light up to edit it. If you want to be able to edit it, again, you have to add a data file that un unlocks that and gives you editing permission. <coughs> Uh, so I can I can modify some of the uh, template because I mean it, it said specifically in the Bainstorm book that if if you're going for a caster you might want to replace this advantage with this advantage like ogre caster 
for any right. little smarter. Yeah, or something. So as yeah. far as editing the template, that stuff like um, like some races might have a bonus to I don't know uh, cultural familiarity. They might come default with it, kind of deal. Uh, normally, the program won't allow you to edit any of that stuff. Or maybe they have a toughness two or whatever, and it doesn't allow you to edit any of that information in the template. There's a way to unlock it. So maybe, like you have a toughness of only two or a one. Maybe you're weaker than the rest of your your fellow races or whatever you look for guys in your race. Or maybe you've got toughness three. Maybe you're stronger than the rest or whatever. But you you, you get the gist of it. And whatever template changes you do make, please 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 run them by me first. Yeah, yeah, sure. I've just because um, it, it says even in the, in the book, like if you want to, if you wanted to make this type of ogre, you know, these are the things you could swap in and out. Didn't see how to do. What I was thinking about doing was just adding the things manually, mm -hmm. right? And that way, if the one thing it said I could swap out, do obviously, you know, with your approval before I do it. But um, for example, I want to go caster. It really hurts me to have the intelligence um, down that far. So we're gonna try to buy that out or figure out a way to kind of. Um, it, it talked about how to do it actually in the paragraph. When it talk about ogres, so um, well, we can okay. take that offline. I'll, I'll fiddle with it a bit. I was I was gonna say go when you go to change data, change loaded data files. If you look in the variants folder, um, and you gotta scroll down to where it says unhide templates, it'll say variant unhide templates, and there's one right behind below it that says variant unlock templates. Load those two up. And that will display the template as well as let let you edit the template. Oh, okay. Load those up. So the in the variant the variants folder. Right. Yeah. In the, in the oh. variants folder, the data. So files. unhide templates and unlock templates. Right. Load those two up. Let it do its thing, and then afterward, you'll be able to see as well as edit the details of the template. Okay. I'll talk to you before I do any changes to that. I don't know if I'm going to anyways, but cool. I was just curious. I do, and then I, you should do a resync or something after you do any template change. Right. Data file change, right? Definitely. And Justin's going to do his old school. <laughs> yeah, just be sure uh, you send. Uh, you've already sent me. Uh, whenever you finish out your tweaks, uh, just send me a copy of it. But otherwise, everything looks great. And okay. Good. Cool. Well, I'll. Oh. I'm good. I'll add some stories. I'm just uh, bookmarking it. Cool guys. I'm gonna add some stories regarding the my backup NPCs, my backup PCs. <laughs> in case something happens to my PC. Always, always, yeah. It's never a bad idea to have a backup. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Backlog's asking if you ever have a slot open. He's he's chatting with me right now. Mm -hmm. uh, I would like to run the first game with four, and then how comfortable I am. I would love to run more players. Honestly, I really would. But mm, I've never run a game through um, Rule Twenty, so I like to feel it out first. Yeah, yeah, I understand. I'm. Or it's also going to be my first time next uh, this uh, this upcoming. Uh, but from the looks of it, Saturday. I don't. I, I think I think it's going to be good. I think we'll be. I think we'll be good. Yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Hey guys, well, nice to well, meet everybody. Yeah, I look forward to seeing you. Look forward to playing with you all. Cool. Yep. So yes, the set. Yeah, I think I'm going to drop out two. Just no, going no. over the uh, goblin template right here. Uh, I don't have it in GCA, but uh, I, it is in the book, so I'm just going to enter it manually. Yeah, no problem. So, so I'll talk to you uh, or chat with you as I'm, I'm working on it, Jeff. And uh, okay. as soon as I'm done, I'll we'll send it to, to Alex to check it out. Cool. And if All you guys, have, if you guys need. Uh, if you have questions on character generation, feel free to contact me. We can do a, a Google Hangout. We can just do it by text, however you prefer. Just let me know. Okay. Cool. Thanks, cool. guys. All right, guys. Good night, everybody. Thanks, Alex. Bye. See you later. Bye. Oh, oh, yeah. See you, guys. <laughs>